post that in the chat. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so this chapter, we're going to talk about other aesthetics and um, they're just a different, like more ways to represent data on the chart. Uh, looks Please, like- Can you share the full screen? We are still seeing your desktop. Oh, okay. I have a big desktop. <laughs> Is okay. this okay? Yeah, it's okay this way. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, and so it seems like there's five different scales that we're going to be going over in this chapter, size, shape, line types, manual scales, and identity scales, and uh, this chapter was a little bit hard for me to, to read through, but um, so I might be switching from the slides to the actual book with the code. Um, so let's begin. So uh, size uh, is usually used for points in text. Um, and the default uh, for the size is the size scale. Um, it's usually like linear increases of, of data. And so um, for this one over here, the top um, chart, as they're using the default um, aesthetics for the size scale. And then for the bottom one, I think they're only using like two different um, sizes, um, size one and size two. I'm just gonna go back. Yeah. So this one um, on the left is the base map. And then the one on the right, they alter the size scales just to have two sizes. So that's why you don't see very, oops, you don't see like a huge range of um, sizes on the on the right. Um, there's a lot of functions um, that you can use to change the sizes of um, elements in of your graph, um, there's the size area um, and the size bin area. Um, I think the bin area is used for like categorical data while the size area is used for like continuous data. Uh, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Um, size radius. Uh, it maps data value to a radius other than an area. I don't fully understand what that means. Um, do you guys know the difference between the, a radius and, the, and an area, or it's not that big of a difference? To me, I've not used uh, radius before. I don't know of Matthew. It, well, it has a difference but geometrically speaking, but I'm not really sure how okay. to say it right. Okay. Um, scaled size bin is a size scale that behaves like a size uh, that behaves like the scale size function, but it maps continuous values instead of discrete. Um, categories um and analogous to the bin uh, position and color um, scales and so uh, for the scale bins it usually just takes like it says it takes like a, a continuous value so let's say we have values from like 10 to 50 and it puts it into like little bins um so anything from 10 to 20 will be um, in the 20 category. For anything between 20 to 30 will be in the 30 category. I have an example um, later. And I was very surprised that you can change the sizes when it comes to dates and, and date times. Um, I thought that was interesting. 
Um, so the, the radius um, size scales, uh, it's use, usually, um, there are situations where the error scaling is undesirable. Um, it's, and so I guess the default when it comes to um, using uh, this function is that it takes like the smallest um, radius and the largest radius, um, which is here, uh, and creates a scale. But um, in this case, the Arthur wants it from zero to the largest um, size. And so that's what happened um, in this um, chart. And here's the code for it right here. It makes more sense here. And so, yeah, the left just uses um, the default scaling, which is um, the radius from, or the information from the, the radius variable instead of using um, your own custom um, scale here. Um, okay, and then here are the bin scaled um, functions, bin size scale functions. Um, they said that it works similarly to um, the the color scales uh, positions when it comes to aesthetics. Um, Default legend uh, size scale in all bin scales except for the position and color aesthetics is governed by the guided bins. So, um, it's so this graph is manufacturer versus uh this display. It's I'm not very familiar with the MPG um data. Um, but it puts like most of this, the, the HWY, um, variable into four, four different bins, um, based on their, on their size. So the bin is like 15 will be the small dot, if it's 35, will be in between here. Um, so unlike guide legend, the guide the guide created for a for a bin scale by guide bins does not organize the individual keys into a table. Instead, they arrange in a column or row in a single vector or horizontal axis. So, um, yeah, so if the axis is true, then all be presented in um, I think this is vertical and you can change the direction from the default vertical to horizontal. So like horizontal is here and this one is vertical. Um, and then you can customize the different ticks, tick marks by using show limits. And you can do kind of cool stuff by um, changing the access into an arrow instead of just like the default line here. If you wanna customize it some more. Um, and I think that's it for size. Um, shapes are a, a little bit more fun. Um, you can uh, map um, values into different shapes. It's the book doesn't recommend to use it more than like six 
categorical um, six values um, for different shapes onto a map, uh, onto a graph, because it will look like way too busy. Um, so the default um, for the scale shape is the, it's the solid set. And then if you want these to be like hollow inside, you could just use, you could just set the default to false, which is here on this second graph. And um, you can also um, manually set the, the shapes. Um, and they have an example in the book. Yeah, so this is how they manually. I don't know, please, I just want to ask, is there any way you can zoom in a little bit so that in case others are, that are following along on YouTube, they can see the video clearly. Uh, zoom in. Because the text, they are too small for us to see here. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to like stop sharing and then let me see. Is this better? Yes, yes, yes. It's better like this. Okay. Um, yeah, so if you want to um, set the scale, the shapes uh, manually, you, you'll just use scale shape manual and you have your value that you want to map and then the different aesthetics here. There's like 25 of them here. Um, is the text okay still here or? If you can zoom in a little, it will be better. Okay. Is that better? Yes, it's better now. Okay. So that's for shape. And then the the line types. Um it's this says it's possible to um to map a variable onto a line type. Um this works best with discrete variables uh, with a small number of um, variable um, types, uh, a small number of categories. I could imagine, you know, it looking like a very busy chart if you had more than five different categories that you're trying to map. Uh, so you use the scale line type or for to map the variables and two different line types. Um, it's an alias for discrete. Um, you cannot use scale line type for continuous uh, variables unless you use the scale line type bind um, function here. And so this is an example um, where they use this looks like census data and they're using the line type um, function. So, um, oh, okay. This is here and yeah. There's 13 line types, which are shown here. Um, you can control the line type by specifying a string with, with up to eight hexadecimal values. Um, you can also use, similar to the shapes, you can also manually um, override um, the line type for each different um, variable that you're trying to map. Uh, yeah. And so, so there are like a couple of line type variations. There's blank, which is shown over here, um, which is, you know, nothing. Um, there's solid, which is like this one over here is more solid, um, dotted, dash, and so on. 
um, like looking at the actual code, like kind of helps me uh, understand the line types a little bit more, but um, yeah. Um, yeah, and I guess manual skills, manual, manual skills are just a list of valid values that are mapped to a unique discrete values. If you want to customize these skills, uh, you need to create your own new manual version for each one. And so we've seen a couple of examples of this with the line type as before and the shape manual. Um, the manual skill has one of the most important arguments values where you specify the values that the scale should produce. Um, in the following example, uh, okay, so they're using scale manual to um, override the default color of, of, the, of the lines for their chart. Um, it doesn't work. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing without the code. So I'm just gonna go back to the book. Um, yeah, I've yeah, I've had trouble with this part actually. Um language skills in this example. So yeah, the example is the color, the scale color manual. Um, so one line is red and the other one is blue. Seems straightforward. Um, okay. So I guess the only trouble with using um, doing it manually is that it won't add a legend. And so um, you have to put in like a informative label um, in order for the legend to appear. And so I guess this is using like the default colors from um, ggplot. Um, and so using um, scale color manual, you're able to map both the descriptive, um, the description in the color, uh, not only towards the map, but also in, in the legend right here. So, yeah, uh, that was a little bit confusing. Um, and then the identity skills. Um, the identity skills, it seems like this function just uses um, what is already in the data set to create like colors um, for for the graph. So um, yeah, I think that's that's it. I, I know that I rushed a couple of things. Is there anything you guys have any questions or anything or um, yeah. Uh, no, nope, for my part, I don't have any questions. Okay, and I'm gonna stop the video. Uh, and I want to thank you guys for like.